Hi there, this is Heather of Shutterbug 101. Today we'll be going over the Canon Connect app and how to use it with your Canon camera, whether a power shot or a DSLR or even a mirrorless camera. Let's get started. You guys may have seen recently that I did a Sony app walkthrough of how to connect it to your camera and how to transfer the pictures over and what the app can offer you. Um, I am going to be doing the Canon Camera Connect app today and I'm going to be using the Canon PowerShot G7X Mark III. The reason I'm using a PowerShot camera versus a DSLR is because I just did the walkthrough on this and I already have it in my possession. So I'm gonna go ahead and kill two birds with one stone and we're gonna go ahead and go over the process with this camera today. So it may be different for different models. Some models may have the ability to connect to the Ca Canon Camera Connect app. Say that three times fast. So if there are any questions about your specific model, please let me know in the comments below. But overall, this should generally be the same for all of the cameras that are selling today. I went into my front yard earlier today and I went and took a picture or two of some cherry blossoms because they're in bloom and I'm pretty sure that's what's making my allergies act up. Um, but gosh, they are darn pretty. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna transfer that to my phone today because I wanna post it on social media because I think it looks pretty and this is done with a macro mode. I think it did fairly well for a one inch sensor point and shoot. Not too shabby. So the way that we are going to do that is by going into the menu itself. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go over to the wireless tab. Now we're going to go up to Wi-Fi Bluetooth connection. We're going to go connect to a smartphone. We're going to add a device to connect to because this is brand new. And I'm going to connect it to my Apple iPhone. So we're going to go iOS. Okay, it closed itself up, so we're gonna go ahead, allow that to happen there, and we're gonna go ahead and connect it to, to the app itself. So the way you can do that, especially with an iOS device, is when you have it hovered over it, you can see that all of a sudden it opens up a little pop-up just pointing at that QR code, and it'll take you directly to the app. Now, I've already downloaded the app, so all I have to do is go open, okay? So it's letting you know if you switch to another app while connected to the camera via Wi-Fi, the connection may, may be interrupted. So please take note of this. I don't need to know that any, any more time, so I'm just gonna hit okay there. So from there, I can go ahead and go easy connection guide. Let's see how easy this is. Now, usually the first time getting it connected can be a little bit tricky, which is why I'm doing this. Now, once you get the phone and the camera connected for the first time, you introduce them. Hi, my name is iPhone. Hi, my name is Canon. Um, they should be able to recognize each other right away every time you want to transfer from then after. Because they go, oh, hey, Canon, how you doing? Give me some of those pictures. And then it won't be so much of a fight to try, try and get them connected. So we may have to take a couple of extra steps today. So here, let's see, select camera or camcorder to connect. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna hit this and we're gonna type in the model that we have. So it's going to be the G7X, and it's gonna be the Mark III. I'm gonna go okay. Okay, is this your camera? Well, sure, for now. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi. Right, we've already gone through this step, so we're gonna go ahead and hit next. Right, select the tab icon, already done it. So this does give you a pretty good walkthrough in comparison to some of the other apps, which you just kind of need to figure out. <laughs> okay, we'll go next. Right, we did go ahead and connect it to smartphone. Right, so from there, add device, depending on your camera screen suggesting that you install the app, uh, may display it. If that's not the case, we'll just go ahead and go next. Right, connect via Wi-Fi, we did that. Right, so this is kind of the way it's displaying now that we've downloaded the app. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go to Wi-Fi. And we're gonna go ahead and connect to the G7X Mark III, which is going to be right here. Perfect. So now we're gonna have to go ahead and put in that password. 
which is going to be 0, 7, 0, 7, 4, 1, 5, 3. And we're going to go ahead and join. Now again, once your camera is connected to this, uh, it should automatically detect this every time. So now that we have that blue check mark there, we're going to go ahead, head on back. We're going to go OK, right? You can see that it is working on connecting here. We definitely want to connect to the iPhone. Establishing a connection here. Connection established. Fantastic. We're going to go ahead and start. So now that it's connected, we can go ahead and view images on camera. And you can see that I accidentally took some pictures of me with the touch screen while I was doing the walkthrough, but I want to transfer this one to my phone here so we can put it on social media. We're going to go ahead and hit import here. We're going to go ahead and you can either do a reduced size or original size. I always like to do original. And you can do use these settings from now on, or if you leave that unchecked, it'll ask you from that point. You hit OK. Then it's going to go ahead, save right open to the photo app, and we're all set there. Now, if I hit this little X here, we go back. You can also delete pictures. You can rate the photos. You can look at the info that it was taken on. So this was actually, let's see, this is image 0010. Uh, that was taken at 1 1 60th of a second at an aperture of 2.8 at a exposure of 0 ISO 400 and then the date and time that it was taken so very cool that you can see the information there and then of course if we go back here another option that we have here is auto transfer to just automatically transfer pictures to here which i personally like picking the pictures myself you can do location information you can tag your images with gps coordinates now keep in mind if say you're on a cruise right you're going to different places and you take all these pictures and you get back on the boat you go oh yeah let me you know tell everybody that i was at this place uh, for these pictures well the thing is is it's going to tag wherever you're currently at when you're tagging them because uh, it's using the phone's gps so even though you were at a specific restaurant or a specific coordinate during a time earlier in the day you being on the cruise ship now is going to pinpoint you in the middle of the ocean not wherever you were visiting so do keep that in mind when you're using that location information you can change certain camera settings but another really cool thing is you can do remote view so it's saying initiating remote live view shooting extends the lens barrel which is why i picked up the camera and put it right side up here we're going to go okay you can see here Look at that, there is my wall, nothing really interesting. Here is my gear, there's my camera that is currently recording this way up there, hi, along with my charging wall and all that. So pretty good live time here that we're dealing with. And so if I have it pointed, say, at my sign over here, I can go ahead and change certain things. I can pinpoint the focus, which is really great. You can tell it to focus on a certain area, that type of thing. It'll also, I believe, track that area as well. So if I move it back and forth, you can see it's tracking that tripod leg as it's moving in the scene, which is really neat. Then we can go ahead and change certain settings. So touch autofocus, you turn that on and off. Mirror live view display, so we can do that as well. Um, live view rotation, so you could do that. Lock screen orientation. So there's different options that you can do there. This is just displaying how many pictures you have left and the battery level now. If we want to go for other settings here, you can do show autofocus button. You can do show zoom slider. And we can do perform bulb shooting on a long tap supported cameras only. Let's see if this is a supported camera. So it doesn't look like this is a supported camera to perform the bulb shoot the bulb shooting. Uh, so only specific cameras are able to do that. However, you can do the autofocus button. Um, and you can also do, let's see here, there's the zoom here. So we can go ahead, zoom in, which it does have a bit of a lag doing that, unfortunately. You can change the focus point here, focus more in on that sign. We can zoom back out. 
for the lettuce here. It's a bit laggy with the zoom, it seems like. So if I do that, it's automatically going to zoom back out on its own, which is kind of cool for video, actually, because it's nice and smooth. Uh, it looks like you can do your flash settings, which, of course, you need to pop up that flash if you do. You have your, um, your white balance options, your tracking, your drive mode. Now, if you are taking pictures with the app, it will only give you a JPEG option, so that's something to keep in mind. Other than that, it pretty much sums up everything about the app here. Uh, nothing much more here. We have our shutter button, which of course will save to our phone as well. Um, but that's pretty much what you're limited to with the app. You do have video mode as well, so you can change like your video options. Uh, you can change your audio here, so you can really fine tune that, which is neat. Your timer, your tracking, your white balance, and of course your zoom as well. You can go toward, wide. It's nice that you can do this all remotely from the cam itself. As you can see, it glitched a little bit there due to the connection. But overall, it's a really neat app to have. And not only can you do, come on, not only can you take images from the camera itself, but you can do a remote control. If you guys have any questions about the camera, the app, uh, what you would like to see on future videos, let me know. I'd be happy to help with any of those. Also, if you're looking for a specific app to camera, I have done Sony, this is Canon, and Nikon, Panasonic, Olympus, and Fuji are coming to you soon. So keep an eye out for those. And until next time, keep your eye out for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye. <laughs>